horrific case of child abuse that left a five-year-old girl dead. Her mother now arrested just hours ago. She and her boyfriend are both now charged with serious bodily injury to a child. And while we won't be sharing any graphic details, this story still comes with a warning for its sensitive nature. News 4 San Antonio's Robin Oguinye brings us more. This is 22-year-old Katrina Mendoza arrested for injury to a child. According to police documents, she, along with her boyfriend, brought her unresponsive five-year-old daughter, Mercedes Lasoya, to Southwest General Hospital Monday. Mercedes was pronounced dead less than 20 minutes after arriving. Mendoza's boyfriend, 25-year-old Jose Angel Ruiz, is also being charged with injury to a child. We have a five-year-old victim who's deceased. And like I said before, it's a very tragic situation. According to the medical examiner, the little girl appeared to have suffered extreme physical abuse and torture. We can't mention everything in the report because some details are very disturbing. Noted in that report, sections of Mercedes' hair was missing. Her body was covered from head to toe with swelling, lacerations, and bruises associated with marks you'd see from a belt. Her feet and toes had deep abrasions with missing toenails. The wounds were in different stages of healing, indicating the abuse may have gone on for a longer period of time. Also, according to the medical examiner, there is no clear or obvious injury that caused Mercedes' death and that further investigation is needed. Mercedes does have a six-year-old sister. We reached out to Child Protective Services to ask if CPS had visited this family before and where the six-year-old is now. They sent us this statement. It says, quote, CPS is jointly investigating this case with law enforcement. The family has been involved with the department before. CPS has the six-year-old sister in foster care. Detectives say after searching Ruiz's apartment and finding evidence connected to the case, it appeared the abuse may have occurred there. We visited a prior address listed for Mendoza. While there, we talked to someone related to her who said they kicked her out a while ago and she had many visits there from CPS. Don't wait till it's too late. Speak out now. Call police. You can call anonymous. You can call the non-emergency number. You can call the emergency number if you feel like it. Um, you can be anonymous, but this is something that can be prevented. We talked to neighbors today who told us they called the police repeatedly about violence they both heard and saw. My first report was on um, November um, after Thanksgiving um, when we first started hearing incidents. We've been hearing um, beating. Um, sounds like a fist hitting a, a hand um, for the past two weeks. I would say more like 50 or 60 hits like that. Gabriel Granado and his fiance, Gabriela Iturbe, live next door to Jose Ruiz at the Henry B. Apartments. Ruiz is the boyfriend of Katrina Mendoza, Mercedes' mother. Ruiz and Mendoza have been arrested in connection with the girl's violent death. The police say involved beatings and torture. I called police several times and I was just, and especially that last time was Saturday morning and I, um, I called the operator and asked, I just, I knew something was a little different this time. Gabriela says she witnessed a previous incident when Mendoza was physically abusive to her daughter in the apartment parking lot. She physically kicked her to the side and of course we called and, um, and it wasn't the only time. Repeated calls did not result in the child being removed from the home. We did call the police, we did what we could, we did what we were to report. I lost faith. The neighbors tell us the abuse escalated in recent days, prompting the final call to the police. They sent somebody within 15 minutes, but they didn't answer the door, so they didn't do anything. I cried. Relatives also tell us today they reached out repeatedly to both the police and Child Protective Services, but were not able to get the agencies to remove the child. It's really upsetting knowing that you tried and you couldn't do anything to change it. We reached out to both the police and CPS today to get their response to the complaints from both neighbors and relatives. They didn't respond to our interview request. Back to you, Robert. Thank you, Jim. It's a question many are now asking. Could this heartbreaking death have been prevented? News 4 troubleshooter Jay Avila continuing our team coverage. He's looking at whether state and local agencies should be held accountable. Jay. Well, Robert, first of all, we spoke at length with SAPD today uh, on the phone, even checked in with uh, Chief McManus. Different story from them. They searched their dispatch center and have no record they've ever responded to child abuse reports at the couple's known addresses. But uh, the couple moved around so much, uh, it's unclear right now why there's no record of those calls. 
Child Protective Services, though, confirms the family was in their system. CPS told me it has taken the six-year-old sister into foster care, but cannot comment further on little Mercedes's death until their investigation is further along. That will likely be 30 to 45 days. I requested an interview with Commissioner Jamie Masters, who oversees CPS at the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, but her office did not respond. Her office has presided over a troubling trend. Here in Bear County, we had 5,000 641 child abuse victims in 2021, an increase for the third straight year. Two of the most outspoken leaders on child abuse happen to be running against each other right now for county judge, former district judge Peter Sakai and former state rep Ina Minjares. It's heart-wrenching to me because as much as we are trying to do our part to, to fund the system, to add funding, critical funding to prevention, um, and then revamp the foster care system, you know, we, we still aren't meeting the mark. We can't have caseworkers that are just distressed because of the underpay. We can't have caseworkers that basically are unable to keep up with the load and subsequently have turnover. Uh, that is still problematic at Child Protective Services. It's a week that has shaken the Alamo City. It's, it's, I'm sorry. It's an emotional time. This week, we reported on three separate cases of horrific child abuse. Two young children, 12-year-old Danilo Coles and 5-year-old Mercedes Lasoya, are now dead. Their siblings immediately going into CPS care. These kids have seen and experience things that none of us could even fathom. Former CASA Vice President Yolanda Valenzuela says the surviving children will need help moving forward. To be that young and to say your five-year-old sister is no longer with us, I've had to do it, and it's very difficult. CPS tells us they do provide counselors for the children taken into their custody. Valenzuela adding they will likely need it throughout their adult years. I know some kids that I had on my cases 20 years ago today, uh, and they're 25 years old, 27 years old, and they're still in, in counseling. Melinda Charles and Mary Beth Fisk both work with children who have experienced traumatic situations. They say any horrific experience can leave a lasting impact, so getting help is important. Kids still grow up with a lot of trauma and even PTSD that's long-lasting. Unfortunately for some of our children, they've experienced trauma over and over again, so it's laying down layers. Layers of trauma, former state investigator Carrie Wilcoxon says can be stopped. Do not surrender your role as a parent to your boyfriends. Embrace your role as a mother.